promo, very polarizing. Yeah. Can we do the Cavs Awards? We can do Let's the Cavs do Awards. All right, we here we go. <laughs> so, Mike, set this up. I'm not quite sure exactly all right, what all this it is. is so. Cavs had a surprisingly good season, as we all know. They were uh, not supposed to be all that good, and it turned out that they were very good, and that was very exciting for everybody. Season wrapped up a little bit um, unceremoniously. Wish it wouldn't have happened that way, but... They do still deserve some awards when we look back at this year, and I want Absolutely. to hear what you guys think of All the right. awards that I All have right. offered to them. Great. Okay, let's start with our first award. Most widely held basketball theory that may have that the Cavs may have helped to disprove, and that is that tall ball is over. Is that true? Mobley, it Allen, and Markinen all showed up and they all did very well. And I even included Taco Fall just for fun because he's so fun to look at. <laughs> right. But we've been hearing for years that tall ball's over. Is it over, guys? And did we, just, did we just prove that that's not true? I think that's why they had so much success because teams defensively aren't built to stop that. Yeah. So they just, and they ran over teams with tall ball. I, I think tall ball worked because they had a couple of guys that could do a lot of different things. I think Laurie Marketing was the cog that made it work. Mm -hmm. When he was hurt, yeah, they, when they, they had hurt, they struggled. Didn't look, didn't, look, didn't look too good. As yeah. someone that liked 80s and 90s basketball a lot better than than modern basketball. Right. I hope it's coming back. I don't think the Cavs proved it because they didn't go anywhere when it right. mattered. But time will tell. I mean, I think they can. I hope we can get some variety in the Wait NBA. Wait till these guys mature a little bit. Yeah. There's and a lot of talent. You, it, Those guys are all signed. Have to, the, the, the thing is, it's a copycat league, just like the NFL. Yep. If they become a difficult matchup for every mm -hmm. team in the league, which we saw that this season. We saw teams were like, Looking around, like, how are we supposed to stop that? We're yeah. not built to stop that. Right. So I think, and they're all tall. They're all like, not none of them are Andre Drummond slow either. Like all of them can they get can out, and defend the three and stuff. Oh, I think point. it just proves that anytime we're making just sweeping like comments and generalizations and saying tall ball is completely over, sometimes it's just a matter of finding the right personnel, right. And yeah. the right system, and it and it, and it can work. It's an interesting team willing philosophy. to do it, and a team willing to do yeah. it. And the Cavs are all in on it. They were. I, I like it. We were I, all I questioning it. I think before the season. I was for us. sure. I'm like, what are they yeah. doing? This is dead right but now I think it's I think it's back and they did it next category most widely held basketball theory that the Cavs may have helped to prove and that would be that it is hard to win with two smaller guards starting in the same backcourt now we had uh you know Darius Garland and, and Colin Sexton at the beginning of the year who actually played pretty well together but then Garland came into his own once uh, once Sexton went down yeah. is that is, is that prove first of all that people were right and those two can't play together I don't think it proves it I, we don't it wasn't enough games but we talked about this yesterday. I mean, I, I think the Cavs need to get better at the guard position. They need to get better at the wing position, too. You know, but uh, and if they have to move on from Colin Sexton to do it, they should. Mike, put that put that graphic back up here. Look look how short and small these dudes look right here, bro. Mm. I don't know if they if y'all well, we don't have a reference look, point. Look really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Colin Sexton look like he about five seven and a half right there. <laughs> well, with with them pictures, no, they're not playing in the same backcourt. We're gonna get destroyed. But all jokes aside, I think you know, I'm, I'm more of a guy that thinks like this. Karis Levert is six foot six, mm -hmm. and he didn't show me what I needed to see. He's just tall. You can be short. <laughs> and good and tall and terrible. Karis LeVert didn't show me what I needed to see. I, I think Colin Sexton was the missing cog. And if he, Colin was, was available, I think they would have went to the playoffs. I second that. I want to see them together more. I haven't seen them together enough. Regardless, was know. it good for the growth of Darius Garland that Colin Sexton was hurt this year? Because it was the best the thing that happened him. to Garland, absolutely. Because I, now he didn't have to work in the shadow of. Mm -hmm. He could assert himself yep. a little bit more. And I think... He, he surprised everybody, I think. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think he would have done good. it either way. I he, really he, do. I think he was ready to pop. I think it would have happened either way. I, I just want to see the yeah. two of them together more. Like I know yesterday we talked about trading Sexton right. and how that would make the Cavs a better team, particularly if you got the right Well, part. this specific trade. I, just, I don't want yeah. to trade him just to trade him. No, yeah. but I think that before you do that, I do want to see a body of work with these guys, even if it's 40 games, whatever. Yeah. I want to see them both together, healthy, how they interact, how they share the ball. Can the team... You know, sometimes you need two basketballs if you, yep. depending on who you have out there. Yeah. I think I also think that Ricky Rubio was a huge help in the beginning of the season training no those doubt. guards how to be uh, yes. professional his profe guards. Yeah, his professionalism. Helped. Moving on, worst year for an alumni of the Cavaliers 2016 championship team. That mm, goes to a tough one. LeBron James. Yeah, oh, okay, great. Right that's there. fine. So obviously he had great stats despite the fact that he's so old that he was uh, playing when Carl Malone was playing. That's actually true, which is amazing to yeah, me. Um, but he also did not pull pull his team across the finish line in the way that he has in the past. This is a team. This is a guy that took uh, Danielle Marshall and Eric Snow to the NBA Finals, and well, somehow with that group, 
Well, I have it. He was. Tw- they were 25 and 31 when he was on the court this season with, with LeBron. He was on. I don't think we've ever down. seen that. Yeah. Have so we? what does that tell us? Is he on his way down? Can he not do this at that level anymore? No, no? I think the talent around him stunk. However, he's part of the reason for that because he was the one that kind of pressured. I don't know. The team to I don't go know. Do they stink? Stunk. I don't think they stink. I think it was a chemistry experiment that went horribly wrong. Well, they had three really talented players and the rest of the team was pretty awful. But mm-hmm. in the big three era, that's yeah, enough but, to get teams right, over the Right, and the, the chemistry line. was terrible, they but they wanted the playoffs. it. But yeah. they wanted Russell Westbrook there. No, I know, but yeah. I, I think more than anything, I think when things go south with LeBron, he gets out of He brain. is a front runner, guys. We've yeah. seen that time and time yep. again in the Celtics series when he basically said, I'm done, I give up. Mm-hmm. When LeBron wants to play and he's engaged and interested, he can dominate a game, he can dominate a series, he can dominate a season. But I think we saw early on in November there were signs that this thing was not going to work. Mm-hmm. And it went terribly south from there. And yeah. quite frankly, I think all of their season ticket holders deserve a refund. Because they stole champ, their money. Champion of the bit. What do you think? Uh, well, listen, Lebr- LeBron James, you you guys know he could have won the scoring title this year, right? If he wanted to, yeah. Like, uh, he, he, he sat out the last game. He averaged yeah. 30 points a game, and he's yeah. like 100, right. right? If you look at it, the reason the Lakers are trash is because of Anthony Davis. He can't stay healthy. He was supposed to be their best player right now. Right. He's not. No. Russell Westbrook was a move out of haste. That didn't really work but out. LeBron wanted that move, so he's got to take some of the blame. Hey, I'll that. give him that blame. Yeah. But for me, 2016, worst 2016 guy having the worst year ever is Kyrie Irving. <laughs> he's having the worst year Wasn't ever. a good year for Kyrie. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I mean, he he brace basically he, said, I'm not going to get vaccinated. Yeah. yeah. Then he, he, he the checked team. out. Yeah. Dane Harden left. But at least they made the playoffs. Yeah, he made the playoffs despite I mean, all that. I know. Oh, let's move on. The right, best yeah. next, let's next do the, yeah. the best year for an alumni of the Cavaliers 2016 championship. This was a tie between Kevin Love, who came had a very strong season, came yeah. back strong, looked like he wanted to be there. Almost mm-hmm. the NBA's sixth man. Yep. Almost and pro- and possibly should have been, depending on how you quantify that. And J.R. Smith, obviously. Oh, yeah, there you go. 4.0, everybody. And, there you and, go. And golf scholarship, I believe. Who right? saw that coming? Nobody. Raise your hand. I love that dude. Living so his best I do life. Too. I yeah. love Just him went too, back man. to college, man. Shout out to J.R. Smith. Who mm-hmm. gets to go? Well, can you imagine? I, I pay thousands to go back to <laughs> Just you. right now. Just See, one day. <laughs> you think <laughs> about where his reputation and not to was go. and not where it is now. Yes, exactly. Right? J.R. Had, had a really bad reputation, and now it's like we all think highly of J.R. Smith. I think he's yep. matured as Big a human time. being uh, he's way the more than I thought he could. Yeah. He I love J.R. Smith, and kudos to what he's doing emphasizing education and he's he's playing golf in college yep and I think college seems like it'd be really fun to go back to when you think about it for a second but we get there and, and in one day we'd be like get me out of here right now I it's feel like I wouldn't want to go to class loud. but the rest of it I want to go to class with JR yeah I want to be his bio I want to hear the qu- I want to hear the questions he asks <laughs> the professor that'd <laughs> yeah. be fantastic all right what's your okay, next, next one um best offseason acquisition or who re- looks like a really tall eight-year-old boy and that would be Finnish <laughs> sensation, Laurie Markkinen. There yeah. he is, everybody. I don't even think there's a, a, a guy we can put as number two in that role. No, no that's him. No, ta- I thought Taco Fall, maybe. Taco Fall, no. He, he, looks, like, he looks like a Rick Does Baker Does shave? Does yeah. he need to shave yet? No, he, but he, <laughs> I've, I've, I'm in love with Laurie uh, Markkinen. I think he's been uh, fantastic the whole season. And right. what a nice little quiet pickup that they had. Yeah, very nice. Next, best hashtag to celebrate a Cavs scoring flurry, and that is hashtag Cavalanche. Look, we even got... G. Bush has uh, oh. used it at one point. You know yes. what? That that really is good. Cavalanche is a fan. And I would see it whenever, uh, like, there were, there were, like, six of my friends who watched all the Cavs games, of uh. course, like psychopaths, and were texting back and forth <laughs> sure. to each other the whole time. And whenever they'd, they'd go on a run, somebody was the first one to put the hashtag Cavalanche <laughs> at us. And there's just, I'm, I'm trying to get that going. I think it's fun. You have I friends that text each other hashtags? There, you, no, yeah. It's a little odd to they do. We Not, do, yeah. You know, within the hashtag, within the conversation. It'll yeah. be like, yeah, everybody watching this hashtag Cavalanche. Yeah, yeah we'll right. do ta- hashtags mm-hmm. within the thing. All right. Anyways, I'm a fan of that. I like yeah. that. Start spreading that around. Okay, Avalanche. <clears throat> next one. Best Cavs player loosely related to the lead singer of the OJs. Anyone know this? <laughs> No idea. You know, I've heard this. You may have been the guy that told me. Somewhere. I might have been. Uh, Levert. It, it is. It is Levert. Very yeah, good. Yeah, I, I heard that. I don't know where I heard it. But Karis I Levert is the third cousin of Eddie Levert, the lead vocalist of Canton, Ohio-based <laughs> R&B group, the OJs. Of course. Aren't we all third cousins? Is that in a to way? To some degree. Down the low. <laughs> I went on my 23 and Me. I got all these third cousins. They're reaching out to me. They want all this right. and that. No, are, no but are, is Levert one of them? Is one of them somebody who wrote Love Train? No. Let me go out on the limb and say no. Yeah. No. Bull is not Levert's Here's third the most cousin. disappointing thing 
thing when I went to 23andMe. I was told forever mm -hmm. that I had a relative from South Africa, uh -huh. right? And I was like, well, that's cool. Like, I'm just like an Eastern European Jewish guy. There's right. really nothing exciting about that. Right. But I'm like, I got one relative from South Africa. Who knows what Who knows what kind of background I have? Uh -huh. I had no relative from South <laughs> well, Africa. You know how you, you get the percentage of where you're I'm from? I'm 99.9% Ashkenazi Jew. That's it. I'm not, no, there's no excitement. Yeah, you guys I mean, weren't proud. big on inter You weren't really co-mingling. No. stuck together. You yeah. stuck no, together. I mean, I'm proud of of who I am, but it's boring. Nine? And then 0.1% like Neanderthal, I think. <laughs> That's a lot. Wow. I had a higher percentage than this, like most Neanderthal I had to at least genes. 20% Neanderthal. No, I'm like, at no. Least. I'm like 65% Neanderthal <laughs> genes, like background. caveman. Yeah. <laughs> That's his, I think that is your nickname is caveman. I'm going to be eating an elephant leg later. Go well, ahead. anyways, uh, <laughs> or just so you know, uh, that's the, they wrote the song Love Train. Oh, keep yes. on the world. Yes. Train. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done, yeah. Mike. Excellent. Best Austin Carr tweet of the season. This one is my favorite <laughs> out of all of them. Austin Carr's uh, legend. I love the man. And here it is. It's the one where he agreed with himself. He said, <laughs> Cavs must get back to defense, the first to get their mojo back. And then later on, he said, I agree, go Cavs. That's Mr. Basketball, everybody. He's a great follow if you don't follow him. He's like one of those people who just answers questions but doesn't exactly know how Twitter works. So he'll just like, his whole tweet will just be like, I don't know, about 7 p.m. And he like tweeted that because someone asked him a question. But then he just put it in so the other window. So he doesn't get the at. Yes, not totally. Matter. Yeah, but I got to admit, when I first dove into that Twitter pool, <laughs> sure, I did a lot of that. And, and finally, one of our social media directors came to me and said, "Bro, you you don't need to respond to like <laughs> the right. Twitterverse." Yeah, you know, when when people ask you, I'm like, "Well, I don't know. No one told me how to do it." They got to get Austin that orientation Poor package Austin. on on the tweet. <laughs> yeah, you know, the social don't, media. Please nerd. don't. Please yeah. don't. I no, love what he's I doing agree right with Mike. now. But who's yep. supposed to help him? Jeff Phelps. Oh, he's got a team. That's Mr. Right. Cavalier. He's fighting yeah. interns, whatever. I'm, I'm with Mike. He can do whatever Austin, he wants. you do Austin. Keep him Let coming. Let us enjoy it. Um, what else? Throw yeah. the hammer down. One last one. One and last that one. is the most underappreciated Evan Mobley statistic. Mm. Uh, obviously, great mm. year. Um, second rookie, second place in rookie Free of the year. Free throw percentage. Uh, and it's this. It's the fact that he's so boring. And he, like I, <laughs> his off the court boringness is fantastic to me, and I absolutely love it. I didn't hear anything bad. This is what I'm showing. This is one of his latest tweets. It's one where he bought his mom a car for his birthday. That's how boring he is. She is a grade school teacher. His father's name is Eric. He is the most wonderfully boring player. I didn't see any him at one club this was, whole season. And I was looking for it. I didn't you know. see he didn't buy like six sports cars. He did nothing. He just practiced free throws right after the game. I and I loved how boring he was. I like to go on Instagram and be like, ooh, Darius Garland got 35. Mm -hmm. I wonder what jump offs he got. I know he got I know he got a bag full of them. Right. Nothing. Nothing. I saw nothing on Evan Mobley. I'm nothing. like, would you please go out? He's like 18. He buys his mom a car. No. And, and his mom, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. His mom's so humble. She's crying. You do know your son is rich, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. He can handle this. No, that's what I love, though. I like. We are so lucky to have him. No issues like that. He is like a somehow even more boring, hopefully, Tim Duncan in every way. Hopefully, you know what I mean? we keep him as long as San Antonio. I mean, can you imagine if we get that guy for his entire career? Yep. Don't I'm you not, even put that out there, Jay. Listen, it scares the death out of you. I think put he's that the kind of guy, there. though, that would do that. Yeah. But I, you're right. I see a lot of comparisons personality to Tim Duncan. And I like in that he has no personality. Just vanilla. And I want right. that. I, I want, want that, too, especially on my NBA superstar. Coach's son, which is fantastic, so obviously. you know he's smart. You know he's smart, and he knows his dad's been on him, and he is. he just seems like a real stand-up guy, and I love that I never saw him have one incident. He was never, like, pulled over going 85 miles an hour yeah. on, a, on a motorbike. I don't think you will either. I don't anything. think you're going to find any yeah. of that. So that. Anyways, those are my Cavs awards. Congratulations. Great season, Cavs. Yeah, well done, Mike. Well done. Very yeah. well done. Made me think about things that I've seen before but never actually talked about. That's the beauty of my I have one, one bonus that I have to throw in at the last second, and that is uh, we have to get rid of one thing or at least improve it. Do you remember the Junkyard Dog Award yeah. that they gave out? It was yep. just like a sat. And here's yeah. the thing. It's a nice concept. Yeah. They gave it, kept giving it to Isaac Okoro for trying real hard. <laughs> uh, but the chain itself, and I, should, I wish we would have gotten a picture. It, I, I forgot about this. It just looks like a, a chain from like a swing set. That's just right. It's just this thin. Oh, like There's the nothing impressive ball. about it whatsoever. <laughs> and we've got to change the chain and make that thicker or more intimidating because right now it's it's an embarrassing award to win. Well, 